Mark said he loves definition, so I figured I'd read the definition. Yeah. The definition of success is the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. But it's interesting how, how it's also known as the attainment of popularity or profit. Mm -hmm. Right? Interesting what the world adds there. You know, I preach a lot, and I always wonder if the sermon is going to be a success. Right? And then I started wondering, well, what makes it successful? What determines if a sermon is successful? You know, there's a book on preaching, and it says that a, a sermon was a success if it sticks. They suggest making it sticky. <laughs> Like I said, it sounds like duct tape. <laughs> Some things are sticky, but they're not truly impactful. I remember the Macarena, but it didn't change my life. <laughs> you know, I remember my first girlfriend. She didn't change my life. <laughs> it's not necessarily meaningful because you memorized it. Yeah. Five zero eight two five 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 zero zero is my mom's office phone number. I still remember it. I called it every day. Don't go don't be calling her, right? <laughs> but I remember her number. Just because you memorize something doesn't mean it's meaningful. So it's gotta be something more than memorable memorable to be meaningful. The most meaningful things at times you don't always remember. Parents, you ever try to list off the, all your kids? <laughs> we can't even get that right. But they mean a lot to you, right? Yes, they do. I have one kid I can't get it right. <laughs> I start yelling at him. Hey, Daisy, it likes to tell her. My siblings are getting in there. My dog's name can't run out. Eli! <laughs> so it's not that. And so I was thinking, what, what, what can truly make today a success? <laughs> The world today would say, well, how many people are watching it on YouTube? Wow. Maybe it's if people enjoyed it. It's easy to think that and say yes. Like, yeah, if people enjoy it. It must have been a success. But then I started thinking, man, if you have a comfortable workout, was that a success? No. no. Like, I just, I just had a great workout. Man, what was so awesome about it? Man, it felt so good. It just, it was relaxing. I think you did it wrong. What do you think about a successful surgery? Like, hey man, we didn't get the tumor, but dude, we had a lot of fun. No! So now I thought about it. Was it, was it a success? Help us out, Preston. And I thought about how many people are asking that about their life this morning. Asking that about their life throughout the week. And I don't think there's a person here who would say, in every area of my life, I'm killed. Right. No. No. But I also don't believe that there's anyone in here who thinks that there's nothing in your life that you're being successful in. Right. Either way, today, we're going to talk about success, amen? Amen. That's the title, that's my point, that's point one, point two, and point three. Right? Because I, I think a lot of people secretly feel like they are failing when others think like you're succeeding. Yeah. Isn't that an interesting thing? Yeah. yeah. For people to think one thing, but for you to know another thing. Mm. But people on the outside can look at you, that man, they're killing you. On the inside, they're just dying. Wow. Mm. Wow. Thank you, bro. Mm. And that's exactly who I was before, God. I love my sharing. Yes. Yeah. Because, man, many people would look at your life and they think, what do you want? I was 20 years old. I had my own apartment, my own house. Living in a six bedroom house. Myself, two cars. Things were awesome. Making more money than my parents. Man, he's successful. He's killing it. As unhappy as I've ever been in my life. Turn me to Psalm chapter 1. You know, sometimes as men, you think the songs are when you're feeling like weak and you know, you're kind of soft, like emotional stuff. It's actually incredible. I mean, you want a heart like David, a heart after God, a heart, and you can learn the Psalms, amen? You can actually learn a lot. Yes, you can. In Psalm chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step of the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. 
but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on His law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yield its fruit in season, and whose leaves do not wither. Whatever they do, prospers. Whatever they do, prospers. And you think, well, well, by that definition of success, whatever he does prospers. By that definition, I don't think I'm succeeding. But I want us to look more into this. You know, he starts, David starts off this psalm with blessed. It's a Hebrew word, and many of us know it's translated as? Alright, two of us know that. Hopefully all of you know that. It's so superlatively happy it's translated as. Blessed, superlatively happy. And I found that interesting. Because to be successful and miserable is not a blessing. Woo. To be skinny and miserable is not a blessing. To be disciplined and miserable is not a blessing. <laughs> to know Jesus and be miserable it's not a blessing. Wow. Right. Oh. On the other hand, the scripture gives us a great biblical definition of what blessed is. Yeah. Mm. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Mm. Who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Who does not get distracted by the crappy value system of this broken world. Mm. You know, for a while I read the scripture and I thought it was about not hanging with people who don't love God. I mean, if they don't, if they don't love God. If they're not insightful. Like, don't hang out with them. But I've come to understand what he's really saying is, whose voice do you value? Whose voice do you value? And really, who gets to set your standard of success? Turn with me to Genesis chapter three. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. This Genesis three. Come on, Preston. This is it. This is fire, Whose voice do you value? You know, in Genesis 3, God created Adam and Eve. It's a really cool insight that Malik has. You know, if you want to learn a lot of Bible nuggets, hang out with Malik. <laughs> he gives me a lot of nuggets, and I tell him, I'm going to preach that. I'm not even going to say anything to you. <laughs> I'm going to look super intelligent. <laughs> but it's super cool that the only time God moved, God created the world. Created the stars, created everything, spoke it into existence. The only time he moved was to bend down and make you, to form you. He moved to make man, isn't it? And God makes Adam and Eve, and he gives them direction, he puts them in paradise. And yet, by chapter 3 and verse 8, it says, Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Is that what happens when we're in sin? We think we can hide from God a little bit more. Right? Like we know we're guilty. God's like, oh man, somebody's coming. We've got to try to hide, right? You might have done that this morning. You know, you're like feeling a little guilty about something. And your, your friend that knows you're going to call it out. He's going to talk to you. So you run to the other side of the room. Well, I can't say, I can't say next to Clark today. He's going to say something. <laughs> they were hiding among the trees in the garden. But the Lord God called to them. Where are you? He answered, I, I heard, your gar- heard you were in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. He said, who, who told you that you were naked? Who spoke to you? Who did you listen to? Whose voice set your standard in your life? Who talked to you? God says, who told you you were naked? That's what God asked Adam after Adam chose to listen to Satan instead of God. After Eve chose to listen to Satan instead of God. And I found out whose voice you value determines your standard of success. So if I judge my standard of success by others, I can always find someone who will make me feel like a failure. And I can always find someone who makes me feel successful. Look to your left. Look to your right. There's someone in your row who prays more than you. And there's someone who prays less. Yes. Except Paul and Gidget's row. They pray a lot. And that's <laughs> right, guys. They pray a lot. You want to feel bad about your prayer life? Talk to them. <laughs> but there, there's someone in your row who, who would make you feel successful. Yeah. And someone that 
can make you feel like a failure. And what I'm afraid of is that we have a standard of success in our lives that we've never checked who said it. Right. We have this standard that we try to live up to, and we've never looked at who said it. Let me help you guys understand it. If we judge success by current worldly standards, then the convicting thing is Jesus' ministry on earth was a failure. Mm. Wow. If you judge success by the worldly standard, Jesus failed. So Jesus came to bring a kingdom, right? Yeah. Did he do it? And before you, you, you say yes, he did, which he did. That's amazing. Great Bible study. I'd love to hang out and teach you it after for lunch. But before you say yes, it would depend on which kingdom you were expecting him to build. If you judge it by how we judge our lives, because we judge our lives by looking to see who approves of what we are doing. We as people, many Christians get caught up with this. So many people get so for the praise from people instead of the praise from God. Yeah. And we dictate our emotions on how well we're doing that day and versus not. Come on. How many people really felt 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 good for me? How many people felt like they accepted me today? Help us out. Or think about it. how many people post the post and then look at it like 30 times in a day to see how many people yeah. like <laughs> You posted it. And you look back at your own post 30 times. You didn't forget what it looked like. Right. You wanted to see how many likes I got. Yes. Who liked it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Because we're all about getting fed from people and praise from people. Yeah. Come on. Fed with praise from God. Come on, bro. We take this word bless, which David uses to start many of his significant psalms all through the scriptures. Don't. Saying, happy is the man. Blessed is the man. And yet we think that blessed is a material thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, I got a boat, so I'm blessed. <laughs> Anyone who thinks having a boat is a blessing never had a boat? <laughs> There's so much work you got to do for a boat. <laughs> My goodness, it's exhausting. And then you got people that call you that say, hey, man, how you paying? <laughs> you got a boat. <laughs> you talk to you ears. <laughs> you want to take the boat out this weekend? <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, success is relative. And sadly, success can also create relatives. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you blow it up, that pay, pay increase, and everyone wants to go up to <laughs> You see, for Jesus, whether the crowds were clapping after he fed them, or if they were leaving saying he had a demon, Jesus would preach. He would preach so well that they would walk away and say, Jesus had a demon. Wow. According to the world, he failed. Right. According to the world, he, he didn't get everyone to like him after that lesson. He would, pre he would preach parables. He preached so in depth into the scriptures that his 12 closest friendships would come to him after he was done preaching the parable. It's like, Jesus, what, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand the lesson. <laughs> he would preach so well, his staff didn't even understand the message. Wow. According to the world, he failed. According to the world standards, he would be a failure. Because Jesus would not settle for the surface meal. Jesus would, would he would not build up the kingdom that the people wanted to build. Even when they wanted to make him king by force, he opposed it. He said, no, that's not what I'm here to do. And I'm just wondering... Is there someone in here who's waiting for an applause from the wrong person? Oh. They're waiting for an applause from the wrong type of people. Some of us are doing things to impress people who are not even paying attention. That part, come on, come on. They're not even watching you. All the while you have God who moved to create and form you. Who has given careful thoughts to making you, establishing plans for your life? Who's rooting you on? And yet we're so focused on the guy wow. or girl next to us and what they think. Yeah, wow. Turn me to Matthew chapter 5. Come on, bro. Matthew 5. Verse 14. You see, Jesus was so successful at what he did 
He was so successful that his own people killed him. Mm. A little backwards, huh? Mm. Yeah. Judging by our standards of success, <laughs> when Jesus went to the cross, every single one of his followers clicked on follow. Wow. <coughs> right. Wow. That's how successful he was. And yet, what wow. we do is we take an earthly standard of success and we try to he- apply it to a heavenly calling. Mm. And yet, you wonder why you're discouraged and frustrated. Wow. Why happiness lasts for just a moment after the success. And why there's still a pit of emptiness. Yeah. Because your standard of success is being set by the wrong voice. Mm. Now, this is what Jesus says. Blessed is. Matthew 5, verse 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Mm. Mm. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed those who are meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. God is telling us, blessed are those who have self-awareness, who know they need God. Yeah. And the world will tell you different. Yeah. It's nice you have a relationship with God. You're just going through a rough time in life. Nice crush to help you up. Come yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. Something to get you through here. I'm happy for you. We read this and say, blessed are those who are born. No way. How can I feel superlatively happy? Those who are poor in spirit? What? Mm. This is the definition of blessing. But you notice how we do this? When we attach cultural definitions to biblical terms. Right. We get blessing and then we define it according to what the world says. Right. <laughs> yep. wow. And we don't allow God to define his own word. Mm. He's the one that established the word blessed. He told us what it means to be blessed. Yeah. And we go, no, not unless I have all of this stuff around me. Um, <laughs> we take terms like blessed or success, and, and then we start to put our own definitions to them. Yeah. That's what the world has said. Yeah. You know, success is in the Bible. Check out Joshua chapter 1. Come on, bro. This Come is on. how God tells us we can be successful. Come on, Joshua 1. Interesting time for Joshua. Moses, his leader, just died. And now he's called to lead a million people. Yikes. Right? Oh my goodness. Right? And, 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 and if you think about it, Moses, he was leading a million people for a long time. Yeah. And then Jethro was like, dude, let's think through this. You can probably do it in a better way. But don't forget, he was actually leading a million people for a few years. No, Some of us have a hard time eating ourselves for a year. <laughs> ah, <laughs> Moses had a million. Well, and then Jeff was like, here, let me throw a better principle in here for you, all right? Amen. And then Joshua takes on, and he's a young guy, feeling nervous. I got a million people. We need to go to the promised land. And God says in verse 7, be strong and very courageous. Yeah. God doesn't tell people to be strong and courageous if they're not feeling strong and courageous. Right. Right. Like they're, they're not feeling it. They're not up to it. They're feeling a little scared. So God's like, hey, i got to tell you something here. He said, be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Mm-hmm. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. So that you may be careful to do everything written in it, then you will be prosperous and successful. Wow. Okay, so according to God, in order to be successful, you need to make a decision to be strong and courageous. You need to be careful to obey all the law that Moses said. Keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. Be careful that you do everything written in it, and then you will be successful. He doesn't say you need to need to go to school for a thousand years and get ten master's degrees. He didn't say you need to work 150 hours in a week. Come on, Julio. He said you need to meditate on my word. Come on. And be careful to obey. Yes. According to this, success comes when you study the scriptures, you take it to heart, and then you live it out. Too often we sell God short. Yeah. We study the scriptures. We even take them to heart. And then we kind of live them up. Mm. And then we don't see true success. And so what we do is we, we, we project the success. 
Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Instead of feeling the success, we have to go tell everyone that we're feeling successful. Yep. Yeah. Right? So that tomorrow you can feel successful as you tell more people and right. then you hear, see how they respond to your success and now you feel successful yeah. depending oh, on how they on. respond. Wow. Come on. And you can do that for a while, but eventually you'll get weary and burnt out. Yeah. And you'll slowly grow in your doubt towards God and His Word. Mm-hmm. And then that doubt grows. And the doubt grows because you did everything God said, you think. You go, okay, I studied the Bible. I took it to heart. I even applied it to my life. But you ignore that you only partly applied it. Right. Mm-hmm. And you didn't give it your full heart. Mm-hmm. You only partly obeyed. Mm-hmm. And partial obedience of God's word is full disobedience. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Partial obedience is full disobedience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now there's no success at all. What you feel is something known as success. Oh, wow. The success that stinks. Aww. Where you need to appear a certain way. And you know what success stinks? The one you have to project. The one you have to project. Right. Just the feeling. Yeah. You don't feel a certain way. And what happens is we can become so addicted to the approval of others that we fail to receive the approval that comes from God. All because we're so addicted to what other people are saying around us. You don't even hear God's approval anymore. And you walk in, you walk in the church feeling miserable and depressed and sad. You come to certain meetings and you can't even stay awake because you're bored with your relationship with God. Help us. Preach! He was widely known. Yeah. People knew him all around. We still talk about him today? Yep. And still some people don't like him. They never even met the guy. They don't like him. <laughs> you know, but in order to be and to do all of this, God must have all of you. Yeah. In order to do this, he has to have all of you. Not an area in your life. Not one area can be off limits. Yeah. All of you. Yeah. Or nothing. Everything must be surrendered. Your job must be surrendered to God. Your school must be surrendered to God. Your relationships have to be surrendered to God. Your area code has to be surrendered to God. Your finances need to be surrendered to God. Every area. That's it. And you can fake people on your right and left for a little while, but you're not faking God. You may fool people, but you're not fooling God. Right. Right. It's sad. We were studying the Bible with such a sharp young guy. Who's ready to make it? So if I can be honest, I haven't been honest with you guys. Mm-hmm. Right, why are you lying? They, they actually don't even want to accept that. They'd, they'd accept you for who you are. Know, they're just for honest. Yeah. 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 Check out 2 Chronicles. Come on, bro. 2 Chronicles chapter 16. And I share this. Something we've been talking about over the last few months since I've been here is morale in the church, right? Yeah. Yeah. The morale. Yeah. Right. You can tell somebody loves God when they're singing and clapping and they don't even know the words. Right? True. Jason knows, knows best because that's like kind of where I strive to sit every Sunday. And he's always, when you used to sing in the AV, I'd always mess up the words.
Um, no, you're not. You don't even know all the words. Nope. I think I know the song, and I start singing, and it comes to that part. On, you guys ever seen White Chicks? Oh. Yeah. yeah. They're in the car, and they're like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and the car comes on that they know, and they're like, and then I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you love something, you just give it your full heart. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Right? And we're talking about the morale. The morale. Because when the morale is high, people can do incredible things. Oh, Paul. Yeah, I'm a big Boston Celtics fan. Woo! Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Side note, kind of cool. Omar and I got to play basketball with a uh, uh, defensive analyst from the Philadelphia 76ers. Kind of cool. Omar's got his phone number, so that's kind of cool. Right. But uh, um, what, what's cool is about the Boston Celtics, last year we didn't do too hot. They didn't do too hot, and they had a, a certain point guard who, who was very athletic, very talented. But the way he led his team was a negative mm. teaching. Mm. He, 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 it really, all the players around him felt scared to perform. And then all of a sudden, they get a point guard who's talented, but not as talented, but just a better leader mm. who raises up the morale. Mm. Now the Celtics are a dangerous team. Yeah. Same exact people, one new guy. Mm. Different heart, different mindset. The way you speak to people are different. Mm. Morale is high. Yeah. Morale is high. Yeah. Yeah. Now you got people on the uh, MVP squad and everything that, that should have been there last year, but morale is down. Yeah, Seeing exact people in this church when the morale is high, what could we do? Yep. Mm. And many of us feel it. You can walk into a room and feel like, man, you can tell people don't want to hear. Good morning. Mm. We're going to turn that. Yeah. Yes. yeah. making a decision to turn. Yep. Yeah. You're going to just decide. Be the change. Don't wait for the church to get fired up to get fired up. No <laughs> be fired up and call other people to be fired up. That's it. Yeah. Come on. And when you're, when you're excited, this last song that we're going to sing today, you're, you're going to sing, dance, clap. I don't care what you do. You're going to get your whole heart. Yeah. yeah. Man. Instead of sitting there and being like, <laughs> no. uh, Dang. You actually look more weird doing that than clapping off. Yes. 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 Heads held low, feeling hopeless, because they're listening to the wrong voice. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy to not mm -hmm. listen to him? Mm -hmm. You can feel like you're failing and not even be aware of how much fruit you're bearing. Mm -hmm. You know, the moment a seed goes into the ground, it starts doing what it was created to do. Right. Mm -hmm. right? Think about that. This tiniest seed Aww. breaks apart, changes form, and it creates something new and even greater. Mm -hmm. that, like these huge trees can come from a plant. Or a little seed now, right? Yep. And at the moment of its greatest point of potential, that seed is broken and hidden. Yeah. And that means that those moments in our lives where God is really using me, mm. where He's really training me, where, where my most potential for success is about to come, come I will feel broken and I will feel good. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. It doesn't matter if they know your name. What matters is does He know your name? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter what they think. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, how are you going to judge if you're a good mom? If your teenage child likes your decision making? No. No! no. no. You're going to let the inmate set the curfew? No. <laughs> Preach. You know, in 1988, back when Jason was about 40. Oh, <laughs> hey, oh. Back in 1988, Oprah lost 67 pounds. Oprah, come on. She came on stage, everyone at oh, yeah. Great job. A few years later, she came back and she said, I was the least healthiest I've ever been. Wow. But she lost that weight. Because of what it did to her on the inside. Yeah. See, people will clap when you lose it. But they don't care what it took and what you, what you had to do yourself again. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in 2 Chronicles 16, 9. Wow. That's how dynamic this is right here. Amen? Right? You're just talking both right in 2 Chronicles. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. It's getting dicey today. 2 Chronicles 16, 9. 
for the eyes of the Lord, ranged yeah. throughout the earth to strengthen. Well, that's encouraging. Yeah. Yeah. God's eyes are searching the earth yeah. to strengthen people. And we think we're sitting here weak and feeling uncommitted, and we're like, well, oh, he's going to strengthen me. He says, to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. What? Yeah. You want to strengthen those who are already committed? Why? Strengthen me. I'm not even committed yet. <laughs> I need the strength to get committed. Come on, God. <laughs> strengthen Come me on. so I can get there. Oh, he says, no, 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 you get committed, and then I'll strengthen you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and preach that person. Yeah. You get committed, and then I'll strengthen you. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? He calls you to be committed before he acts. But he promises it all. He will strengthen you. And God is not like some foolish God who doesn't know how to strengthen and encourage you. Right? He's not going to give you some little whimsy pamsy blessing that you're not even encouraged by or strengthened by. Right. right. Like God knows how to strengthen you, amen? amen? He knows. He knows when you get fully committed what that, that, that raise is going to do for you. Yes. He knows. Woohoo! Look how fired up he is. But man, I'm grateful he's committed to me and not the blessings. Right. Right. But I still want to bless him. Right. Yeah. But the moment you get committed to the blessings instead of the blesser, you've got it all wrong. Yeah, right. The gifts become greater than the gifter. Come on. And our focus and our joy then becomes result driven. Yeah. I'll be fired up when I'm making a disciple. Right. Man, if Come on, Preston. I'm, I'm not happy. Mm. Right? I'll be fired up when everyone asks me to preach or speak or sing. Mm. If they don't talk to me, I'm going to be sad. <laughs> <laughs> what? When you've got a great relationship with God, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. You're fired up. I don't care if there's sunshine in Oregon or not. You're just happy. Yeah. Right. You are happy. It's true. <laughs> I got a new favorite song. I got a new favorite song. I have no idea who sings it. But part of it goes, uh, you know, I'm feeling blessed. Never stressed. Oh, yeah. I got the sunshine on my Sunday's best. Come on, baby. And I love singing it. Because I just I feel it. I feel happy. I wake up in the morning like, you're awesome. still like, this is awesome. Stuck in traffic. Like, life's good. God says, when you're committed, I will strengthen you. Yeah. And you know what you see? <clears throat> that in the application of the scriptures is when growth happens. Wow. When you start applying them to your life, yeah. you start to grow. It's not the knowledge of the scriptures that help you grow. It's not learning more of it. It's not memorizing more of it. Mm. The Pharisees knew it back and forth. Mm. Yeah. yeah, They were opposing Jesus. Mm. Right. And yet they knew everything about it. Mm. You can know all you want. But until you live it, that's the difference. There it is. I love hanging out with those Baldo. Margo did a great job making them to a disciple. Yeah. Yeah. This guy's got conviction, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And he's like, man, I, I sat down with, with a guy that knew the scripture way farther than me. I was nervous. But what I knew was different is that I was actually living it up. Mm. Mm. Some of us are so intimidated to talk to people about God because like, they, they might know more than me. They might! Right. Right. Church, right. If you're actually doing it, it says the righteous are as bold as lions. Yes. Yes. If you're actually living this out, you're not scared or intimidated by anything. Yes. No. Right. You're not scared to call somebody or talk to somebody. You're not scared to have an awkward conversation. Yeah. You're just feeling righteous. You know you're right with God. How do we measure your success with God? It's are you yielding more of yourself to God every day so you can produce the fruit of the purpose he has for you? Are you yielding more of yourself every day so God can produce the fruit through the purpose that he has for you? I have no idea how long I've been preaching for. I've got a lot left. <laughs> I'm still awesome. Don't fall out the window. Amen. Check out Luke 17. Come on, bro. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. We're getting that good meal in today, amen? Yeah. Ain't no Subway sermon. Subway. <laughs> 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 this is all you can eat, yeah. It's like more made butter, though. None of that. Exactly. Fast food. Make me these, Omar. Luke 17, verse 20 says, Once I'm being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, The coming of the kingdom. Of God. It's not something that you can be observed. Normal people say, here it is, or there it is. So it's not what you think. It's not what the world would think. Because the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom is within you. God is giving you everything you need for a life in godliness. Wow. Everything. Here and now. 
And yet the world and the enemy is marketing to you about being there. And yet God says, here. And the world says, no, over there. Not here, there. That's the strategy of the enemy. To get you to hate here and meet the desire to get over there. And yet God worked through that way. He helped us to hate our lives and come to God. The grass was greener in the kingdom. We came to it. And yet, isn't it funny how sometimes in the kingdom we start to look back and think the grass is greener over there again? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it just seems nicer. And Satan's starting to work on you. Yep. He wants you to hate here and think wants you to desire over there. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, back in Psalm 1, it's interesting how in the scripture he says that a righteous man would be like a tree planted by the streams. Mm-hmm. Yielding its fruit. Its fruit. And oftentimes I can overlook that word its, right? Come on. You guys ever read scripture and just overlook it? Yeah. yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and you overlook, it says its fruit, meaning meaning you as the righteous man can yield your fruit in season. Oh. Meaning you can't be spending your time frustrated that you can't bear this guy's fruit. Because yeah. mm-hmm. you need to bear your fruit. Right. I can only bear Preston's fruit through God. But I need to be the most fruitful breast that I can be. Yeah. I say it like that? I know it's some weird times these days, but I, I want to be the most fruitful breast that I can be. Come on, babe. Come on. I got to yield my fruit. I can't be the fruitful Malik. Mm. I can't be the fruitful king. Mm. God has a plan for me. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be famous. I'm going to be fruitful. Amen? Yeah. Some of us are such good apple trees. And then you see the orange. No. Come on. Come on, orange. I'm a failure. Wow. I'm a failure. Wow. Come on, we, don't, we don't have time for it, but study out 1 Corinthians 12. We're all a different part of the body. Yeah. Yep. Wow. A foot cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And if the foot said, hey, I don't need you, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. Because the body needs you. Come on. We need each other. Yes. But stop looking at the other body parts and thinking, man. Not a right hand. Mm. Not the left nose. Not the left nose. Family, you planted. You planted this morning. You planted in the Word of God. Come on. Truly planted. Are you allowing the seed to burst open and deep roots to just grow in the Word of God? Talk about it. You know, Matthew 14, 22 to 33, one of my favorite scriptures. I love even like acting this one out where Jesus or Peter starts walking on water. Yeah. And we love that scripture, right? We love preaching that. I preach it all the time. Peter walked on water. Yeah. Incredible miracle. But how often do we talk about Andrew who stayed in the boat? Yeah. Jesus only said, get in the boat and go to the other side. Andrew was content enough to listen to God and his word. Yeah. Peter was the one who needed the miracle. Mm, wow. Andrew said, I'll trust you. I'm content here. You said get in the boat. I'm in the boat. Even in the early storm. I'll stay in the boat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't talk about it. Mm-hmm. Think about Jesus' ministry. When he left, did he succeed in training people? The time he leaves, you got Peter over here chopping off ears. <laughs> <laughs> Judas is betrayed him. Man. You know? And all of them stop going. See, but you judge, you judge it too soon. Yeah. You judge it too soon. We do the same for us. Yeah, Are we making do. a difference? Help us. Am I really making an impact here? Do I have to be a part of the kingdom? I mean, would everyone even notice if I wasn't? Wow. Yeah. Come on. You don't understand what about being a part of the body is. Mm. So when the body hurts, you need to do something. Right. Yeah. Buddhism will teach you that pain is bad. Christianity will teach you pain is good. Yeah. Mm. Buddhism is like, avoid pain. Christianity is like, you will go through pain to grow. Yeah. 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 It's like, oh, uh, which one do I want to do? <laughs> right? Yeah. Pain is good, though. Because if you didn't feel any pain, yeah. and somebody shot you in the leg, you'd just be walking around. Yeah. You no idea, you're bleeding out. Pain tells you something's wrong. That's right. Yeah. Come on, bro. And when the body hurts, you need to fix it. You need to yeah, do more. something. I've gone through a lot of tooth pain. And either you fix it or you get rid of it. Let me yeah. tell you something. You act quickly. Yes. Yeah. I had a lot of tooth pain and I act quickly. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm chewing on clothes throughout the night. I'm like, it's not going away. 
This hurts! Uh, and I'm only 29, and I'm hitting a few teeth out of my head. Well, Preston, <laughs> help us. Some were done well, some were done oh, no. kind of like in the alley, it felt like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But you get the pain out. You do something. You know? Don't wait for someone else to act. You need to act. Decide to chase your calling. Come on in. Your calling does not include less of God this morning. See, I've come to learn someone that's not succeeding with God is when they're trying to do less for God. Nobody's ever left the kingdom saying, you, do, you, don't, you guys don't do enough for God. Wow. Right. Everyone always leaves the kingdom saying you do too much. You're yes. looking to do less for God. Yes. Mm. Right? You got people that are like, I don't want to fully commit. Mm. Right? I'm not coming to every meeting in the body. I'll be there some days. I want to do less for God. Because God hasn't done enough for me. Come on. I mean, dying on the cross, you want come me to come on. to everything? No way, dude. Uh, ouch. Like God owes you something. Yeah. Come on, Preston. Decide to chase your calling. Come on. You know, according to the world, Jesus failed in his mission. And yet, look at what Jesus has done. Yeah. He has a thriving church of disciples here in Portland. Yeah. Yeah. He has a unified movement of disciples all around the world. Yeah. We are living out his plan before us, and we are seeing the world evangelized before our very eyes. Yeah. Come on, Preston. With God, he planted 12 churches just last year. Yeah. Come on. Lima, Peru, Davao, Philippines, Kathmandu, Nepal, Phnom Penh, Cambodia, Apaya, Samoa, Yangon, Miramar, <laughs> Johannesburg, South Africa, Crouching Tiger 2, that's a church in China that we can't even talk about or they get killed, Atlanta, Georgia, New Haven, Connecticut, Indianapolis, Indiana. Yeah. 12 churches last year. Amen. This year we are striving to even see even more done. Come on. As we have 13 plantings planned. Amsterdam, Netherlands. Bagao, Philippines, Bahrain, Brazzaville, Congo, Crouching Tiger 3, Scotland, Guam, Calcutta, India, Porto, Ecuador, Dover, Delaware, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Salt Lake City, Utah, Tucson, Arizona. Wow. And what is more important than helping people get planted in the Word? What you are doing is the most important thing in this world. Never failing to really live like but to do this, it takes people and it takes money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just the reality. Yeah. It takes people and it takes money. Yeah. Now I'm feeling the pressure uh, of what that really means by people. Mm. Mm. <laughs> talking to Joel and he's like, hey, we've got to send somebody to Salt Lake City. That's like the day I got here. And he's like, well, we were thinking Mesa. I was like, hey, man, I, mean, I don't know everybody, but sure. That sounds good, man. Mesa goes. You guys just sent out 15 people last year. Wow. Yeah. All the way to Chicago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then he's like, hey, we're sending out Minneapolis, Minnesota at the GLC. We need two people to go. Wow. Oh, what? <laughs> he sent out, can we have a year? Can, we, can you give us some time? <laughs> he's like, well, no, at the end of the year, we're sending out Boise, Idaho. We're going to have to send four or five more people from board. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> is this is real. Yes. What we are doing is real. Yes. We're not talking about evangelizing the world. We're actually doing it. Yeah. 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 And it takes people and it takes money. Yeah. Come on. Let's close out here in John 10. Come on. Come on, Preston. Come on, Preston. Come on, Preston. John 10. <laughs> John 10, verse 10 says, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Jesus wants to give you the most fulfilling life you've ever had. There it is. And if you think anything different, you're listening to the wrong voice. Come on. Family, you got to grab a hold of the plans that God has for you. Mm. Seek them with all your heart. Put them as your first priority. Uh, and watch everything you do prosper. Right. Right. Come on, come on. Not forgetting that each of us must get planted. Meaning you must be hidden. You must be broken. Yeah. And let us allow Jesus to give us the most fulfilling life ever. But in order to do that, you must surrender your life. Yep, there it is. Let's get together. Let's work together. Let's change this world. I love you guys. God, y'all. Amen. Amen.